Every year in the middle of the spring, a strange hunt takes place in the lagoon of Fuente de Piedra in southeast Spain. At dawn, a perfectly coordinated line of men and women walks along the banks of the salt lake. It's the breeding season of the greater flamingos, and just two months ago, thousands of new chicks came into the world. In a few days' time, the young flamingos will be able to fly, setting out on their journey towards North Africa. And it is in this period, just before they leave, that the Environmental Agency and the Doñana Biological Station work together to catch, study, and ring the new generations of flamingos. The Fuente de Piedra Lagoon has the largest breeding colony of greater flamingos in Europe, with over 12,000 couples. The studies carried out thanks to these captures have enabled scientists to understand more about the species, revealing the value of a seasonal lagoon which had previously been considered a wasteland. What had previously appeared to be a barren, unhealthy place is now, in the light of this research, revealed to be a vital spot for the survival of the European flamingos. These brackish waters teem with single-cell algae and tiny crustaceans, which become the food for thousands of flamingos during the delicate breeding season. Many years of effort by nature-loving volunteers have managed to change public opinion. What was considered a source of diseases, a lagoon most people considered should be drained, has become an integral nature reserve admired by the public, a guarantee for the survival of the European flamingos. ecology and alarming environmental deterioration. But just when the process appeared irreversible, new winds of hope have begun to blow from every corner of the earth. Now we know that the protection of our environment, of our ecology, is a global task in which all living beings and their surroundings are interrelated and interdependent. Every individual is important, each species is unique and unrepeatable, and each ecosystem is a complicated structure, enabling life to continue. Science is demonstrating that protecting biodiversity is an obligation in which the future of our own species is at stake. The governments of the world have at last begun to take the global environment seriously. It's no longer a question of simply protecting a threatened species, but rather of conserving the so-called hotspots of biodiversity, areas which contain the largest percentage of animal and plant species on our planet. And in order to determine these vital bastions, the scientific community, non-governmental organizations, and some large financial companies are at long last combining forces. Organizations like International Conservation or the Field Museum in Chicago have since 1989 been organizing the so-called RAPS or Rapid Assessment Programs which sample the biological wealth of certain endangered areas in order to determine whether they are hotspots which should be protected. 
At the same time, large pharmaceutical companies are financing the preservation of areas of tropical forest in order to be able to investigate in them in search of new drugs. This bioprospecting, as it has been called, turns the conservation of the jungle into a profitable asset for the country that owns it. Initiatives are now being put into practice, but in order to be successful, they must take into account the time factor. The biodiversity hotspots are extremely fragile places, and so in many cases such as the islands of independent evolution, the measures that must be taken in order to reverse their deterioration will not work unless they can bring results in the short term. In Madagascar, an island which became independent of the African continent 165 million years ago, 90% of the plant species and 83% of the animal species are endemic. That is, they cannot be found in any other part of the world. This gives them the value of uniqueness, but also makes them dependent on their exclusive surroundings in such a way that the loss of a single species can set off a chain reaction leading to the disappearance of many others. Here, every single living being is vital and irreplaceable, and every form of life, however insignificant it may seem, is unique and unrepeatable. These places, this marvelous variety of species, reach their present condition over the course of 165 million years of solitary evolution. But the 2,000 years that man has been on the island have been enough to cause the disappearance of many of them, and today, with the massive destruction of their habitats, we could wipe out the majority of those remaining in barely a couple of decades. <laughs> 